Hello, welcome back. I'm the Erroneous Kaiser. You're watching another one of my comic book pull lists. This is for the month of October. All right, uh, once again, another heads up. Uh, I live in Japan. It takes a little while for these to get to me. I can only get once monthly shipments from DCBS or uh, Discount Comic Book Service. So that means uh, you might have read a few of these issues already. All right, first up, here we got Aquaman number 51. This is the B variant cover uh, by Joshua Middleton. Uh, yeah, I'm hopping back on Aquaman. Uh, he's out of that, oh, lost his memory point, uh, and is back <laughs> uh, to his regular regular self. I'm back on now. Here we got Descender. This is number five. This is by Jeff Lemire. Continuation from the story Descender. It's a few years in the future from that. Here we have Batman Superman. This is issue number one. This is a new series. Uh, we're going to see a lot of the Batman who laughs, at least in the beginning here. Uh, this is the blank variant. If you open it up, you can see we got the, the well, half of the regular cover. There's another cover with Superman in the foreground and Batman in the foreground. That is the half that would be over uh, on the right side. But uh, for the blank variant, we just get this uh, that one side. Black Science, number 42 by Rick Remender, still going strong. Here we got Blossoms, the 666. This is issue number five. This is written by Colin Bunn. Uh, this might be the last issue, though. All right, uh, this is Catwoman, number 15. I, I had to get this one just for the cover. Uh, the Batman Returns Catwoman suit is in here. Uh, this art is done by uh, Stanley, Stanley Lau, uh, otherwise known as uh, nickname Art Germ. Uh, I do think it, this is totally awesome. We got die number seven uh, if you're not reading this get on it it's uh yeah uh, one of the best uh, new series uh, out of image comics right now issue 11 of 12 for doomsday clock uh we're gonna see uh, i hope we're gonna see big things happening uh in uh issue 11 and 12 uh there's supposed to be you know huge uh ramifications for this series on the dc universe uh, I mean, I don't know how far reaching they are as of yet, uh, but uh, I'm still excited to read it. This is Faithless number five. I got the erotic variant, uh, which I can show you none of. Uh, in previous videos, I was able to give you like a, a little slight cover reveal. I can't show anything on this cover at all on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, another series that I like from Jeff Lemire. This is Gideon Falls number 16. This should prove to be a pretty awesome series. This is Gotham Monsters number one. Uh, if you look at the lineup, we got Frankenstein, uh, I, I Vampire, uh, Killer Croc, uh, Orca, and Lady Clayface. Um, I think in the beginning here, we're going to be seeing one of uh, Frankenstein's main villains. Uh, they're coming together to fight. Uh, this is a weird team up, uh, and I think it could be really cool. Green Lantern number 11. Graham Morrison's writing it. Uh, it, it it's awesome. Here we are, Guardians of the Galaxy number eight. This is Bring On the Bad Guys variant by uh, Lee Inyuk. Uh, I hope that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, I probably murdered it. Um, but uh, this series will be ending at 12. Uh, and yeah, Donnie Cates is writing it. Uh, and I think we're gonna be, this is, we're on the way to some really good stuff here. Pretty much the best thing out of Marvel Comics right now is Immortal Hulk. Here we have issue number 23. Scott Snyder and I hope I get his name right, James Tinian the Fourth, uh, are writing Justice League and it's going great. I love it. Uh, this is number thirty and this is number thirty-one with Tedesco doing the co the cover art here, which I think is awesome. We've got Clayton Crane doing the art here for Man Bat uh, for the issue of Justice League Dark, number fourteen. Jason Aaron and Ezad Ribic are back together for King Thor. This is number one. Uh, this is kind of the the wrap up to Jason Aaron's run on Thor. Uh, we're gonna, probably going to see a lot of old Thor, young Thor, and now Thor uh, teaming up to do battle at the end of the uh, at the end of the universe, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. Loki has the uh, the God Killer sword, uh, and uh, yeah, he's gonna. Final, this is the Thor's final battle with Loki. Uh, I'm really on board with this because Esad Ribic is doing the art for the whole thing again. He is one artist I consider godlike, uh, and which is a perfect match for doing Thor, the God of Thunder. 
or well, no, he's not the God of Thunder anymore. Actually, at the end of time here, he is the All Father. Here we got Legion of Superheroes Millennium number one of two. Uh, and I'm assuming that the second issue will be uh, like over on this side for a connecting cover. Um, they got a whole bunch of writers in here that are kind of probably bringing everybody who aren't fans of uh, Legion of Superheroes up to speed. So M Brian Michael Bendis can take the reins and start uh, writing stuff for them pretty soon. Issue number two of Manor Black. Uh, this comes from Dark Horse Comics. Uh, Colin Bunn is writing it. Uh, it's probably like the third or fourth uh, title in here that he's that he's doing just from this pull list probably. Uh, I do try to get a lot of the stuff. Uh, first issue was Wicked Cool. We've got uh, one old family of us warlocks and, uh, the, and then uh, one witch is trying to... Far away. No, 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 no. I'm not really sure what's going on. But uh, that bandage face guy is pretty cool. Uh, I should also mention that uh, Tyler Crook is doing the art on here. Uh, so Colin Bunn and Tyler Crook, that's the same team that was doing Harrow County, which I was in love with. Okay, uh, here we got Marvel Comics 1000. There were so many covers for this, uh, and without seeing any of them, uh, I just picked the one with the, the name I knew I liked the most, which is Mark Brooks. This is the Marvel 1940s variant for Marvel Comics 1000. Uh, there was a very expensive Disney one where uh, Mickey Mouse is on the cover too. That's like that's like over a hundred bucks or something like that. But I am very happy with this. I think uh, the other one that was wicked awesome was the uh, 1980s Tedesco variant with She-Hulk on the cover. That looks beautiful. I might have to pick that up at some point. All right, uh, here we have a Moon Knight annual. This is another part of the connecting variant, uh, which I um, I'm a real sucker for. All of these one shots for our series that aren't really uh, going on right now. We got Wolverine, uh, She-Hulk, this is Moon Knight, uh, coupled with some that uh, do have series going on, like Venom uh, and Punisher, uh, will make one big connecting uh, cover. And the art for all of them is done by one guy, John Tyler Christopher, uh, who usually does the kind of uh, action action figure variants for a lot of stuff. And I think he's still doing those for a lot of comics as well. And so it's recently been a lot rarer to see him do something that's not that. All right, here we got Punisher number 15. This is an awesome team up. We got Ghost Rider, Punisher, Moon Knight, freaking Black Widow. And uh, this guy, he's from the 90s. What's his name? Like Night Thrasher? Uh, maybe, maybe it's Night Thrasher. Uh, well, yeah, pretty awesome team up, uh, and, and this, this series is, uh, freaking awesome anyways. Uh, this is Reaver number three, uh, yeah, this is, yeah, Swords and Sorcery Suicide Squad. Red Hood Outlaws this is number 37, uh, we just saw in the annual that, uh, Bizarro and Artemis came back to their original Earth, uh, we're gonna see a meetup uh, with red hood and i am so happy to see them back together again i can't wait of course they're probably gonna have to fight before they can make up but i'm fine with that as long as they just get the family back together faye dalton doing the cover art for the uh, original cover the a cover for uh vampirella and red sonia meet betty and veronica i mean the story is just fun uh, but I am now becoming a bigger and bigger fan of Faye Dalton's art. Here we got She-Hulk uh, annual number one, another part of uh, the connecting cover. This is a new series from Boom Studios. It's called Something is Killing the Children. Uh, here we have the Jay Lee cover variant for this. Uh, I didn't know it was going to be a version cover, which is very, very nice. Uh, actually, there was a Jenny Frizon variant that uh, when I ordered these was not available. Of course, I would have gone with that. As long, This is pretty cool, but that Jenny Frizon cover is beautiful. The writer for this is James Tinney on the 4th. Uh, recently, I've been learning there are some people who maybe don't like his work so much. They think uh, it's boring, but I feel like the stuff he's been doing with Scott Snyder and Justice League is really, really good. Uh, I mean... He, Maybe he's written some stuff for Superman uh, recently that I maybe was just on the fence about. It wasn't like great, uh, but the, because of what he's been doing in Justice League, I decided to give this one a shot here. 
All right here we got Spider-Man Life Story. This is number six. This is the 2010s. I don't really know how many issues there are in this series, uh, but it's been going since the 60s. Uh, Peter Parker has to be pretty old by now. Uh, it's been really cool so far. And if you can understand that it's its own thing, its own world, uh, I think it's really enjoyable to read. Right, here we have Team Ninja Turtles. This is number 97. And who's that on the cover, you might ask? Uh, if you haven't been paying attention, there is a new Ninja Turtle. So Jenica was badly in injured, uh, and then what happened was she ended up getting a blood transfusion from Leonardo, uh, and along with some other procedures, it was the last resort to keep her alive. Uh, so Jenica is now a Ninja Turtle, uh, so, oh yeah, and she definitely is a Ninja, she was a Ninja before, now she's just Turtle. This City at War storyline is wicked awesome, uh, and we're leading up to issue 100, which I just learned, uh, issue 100 will be this big blowout, uh, and then the creative team will be changing. From what I understand, Sophie Campbell will take on both writing and art, uh, for, from issue 101. Uh, she has done art for Ninja Turtles in the past, uh, usually when the turtles are a little more cutesy looking, uh, I mean, like when Pepperoni uh, first came on the scene in the in the comics, um, the, she was doing that was her time when she was doing the art. Uh, I wasn't always the great, the biggest fan of her interpretation of Mikey, but I guess I got used to it. Uh, so uh, here's hoping for the best from issue 101. Here we are. Shredder in hell. Uh, so yeah, Shredder's dead. He's in hell. He's fighting. I don't know if he's gonna make his way out or not, uh, but he is fighting against himself and his uh, yeah, yeah, his darker self while he's in hell. Uh, I think this series is freaking amazing. Uh, if it were a way for Shredder to come back, that'd be cool, but even if it wasn't, and it was, uh, I, I have been enjoying it immensely so far. We got Unearth number three. Uh, I don't know how many Cullen Bunn titles I've gotten here this month, but uh, probably not enough. <laughs> uh, but this series from Image Comics is wicked awesome. Uh, we've got this uh, kind of uh, exploratory team going going into like these caves, uh, and there is like these like well, pre-human primordial monsters, uh, something along those lines. We've got some yeah body horror in it uh freaking people going insane and turning on each other checks off a whole bunch of the boxes on how to make an awesome comic book uh this is art germ doing the cover for vampirella number two uh i'm not sure if this is the a cover or not uh, i think maybe frank cho was doing the a cover i'm not sure uh i do like it a lot uh but from issue three i think uh i'll be getting some faye dalton art and that looks pretty sweet too uh, one and two, uh, we deciding which cover to get was actually really hard. Uh, it got uh, a little bit easier from issue number three, because uh, I think the Faye Dalton art was uh, uh, just, just a step above uh, the other options, I think. Vampirella Red Sonia number one. Uh, this is uh, Julian Tedesco doing the art for this. I think it's a pretty cool pose. Uh, they both look uh, pretty badass there. Uh, yeah, it should be a good read too. Wonder Woman 77, here we got Jenny Frizon doing the art on a very impressive cheetah. She's looking intense and violent. I love it. And here we got 78, also amazing. But man, that cheetah was wicked awesome, right? All right, and that's going to wrap it up. Uh, that's all the comics that I'm going to be reading this month. Let me know if you've read any and tell me what you think down in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm like, where is that thing? If you don't want to do any of those things, I do totally understand. I do hope you had a very nice time watching them, though. Uh, I'm the Erroneous Kaiser. I'll see you next time.